you know, we have this term el pada o el pader, and so there are those are two words, and it's very common in um, Islamic theological language that when you have two words that are contrasted like this, they have two different nuances of meaning. So, for example, in the Hadith of Jabir al Islam, I talked about earlier. Uh, he talks about Islam, uh, Iman, and Ihsan. So those are all three terms for faith. Um, but when they're contrasted together, they have a more nuanced meaning. So if you're talking about Islam, you're talking about the outward deeds. If you're talking about Iman, you're talking about the beliefs, the inner beliefs that we have. And if you're talking about Ihsan, you're talking about this mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this having this pure heart and awareness of him and worshiping him as if you see him. But if you mention any, any of them by themselves, uh, they have the, the whole complete meaning, which is just the faith of Islam. Right. So we have two terms like this. We have al-qada or al-qadr. And so, you know, when there's two, you know, there's a nuanced meaning that is to be pulled out from those. And uh, scholars had different opinions, but I chose the one, uh, of Ibn Hajar al-Asfalani, who was a um, classical Hadith scholar, very well known. Uh, and he basically says that Pada is the general decree for the universe all time forever. And then you have Qadr, which is the specific decree of individuals and their details, right? So if you think about um, the imagery that we have in Islam, uh, there's a uh, Aloh al Mahfud, the preserved tablet. So, this is like the tablet where God has inscribed everything that ever will be and ever could be on this tablet. That and this, is, this is described in the Quran, of course. That this a reference to that is in the Quran itself. Yeah, it's mentioned explicitly in the, in the Quran. Um, so you have this like general decree that exists already, right? And that's everything. And that, and that's representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and his ability to uh, bring into creation anything, anything he wills. And then you have specific decrees. So you and I and the people listening, and um, we have angels who are writing down what we're saying right now, angels that are writing down what we're doing um, and then there are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for us throughout the day and throughout the, you know, our years of our life and so on. And those specific things are subject to change based on how we're using free will. Mm. So, um, I, you know, I mentioned many of the texts that, uh, uh, Establish the fact that we have free will. Allah. You will not will unless Allah wills. The Lord of the worlds. So we have free will. The Quran confirms that we have free will, but it is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could take it away from us. He, he could afflict us with insanity or unconsciousness or whatever, and then our free will is gone and we don't have control anymore. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this control. And so that, that is a firmly established fact. And I don't think I have to go hmm. too far here to justify that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the, the philosophical problem is how does your mind rationalize or understand um, uh, that everything has already been decreed and that we have some control over our lives? I mean, that's a really difficult rational problem. And one, of the, and the reason that is a, a difficult rational problem is that because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala exists outside of the creation, He is above the creation, He is outside of time and space, and our minds are limited to this framework of time and space. So we can't think outside of time and space. But the the, the qadr is operating outside of time and space, right. um, and so we're limited. And and um, Imam al Shafi'i. Uh, may I have mercy on him. He's one of the four imams. He used to say that your mind has a limit, just like your eyesight has a limit. Mm. So, you know, you can only see so far down, you know, however far away you can see and your mind can only go so far. Right. So it's very difficult to wrap our minds around this reality that exists on a different level of existence that we, we, we can't even conceive. So that's, that's why it's a difficult rational problem. 
And the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has solved that problem for us, because he communicates in a way that has to be understood easily by everybody at every level of education and, and in every language, um, is that he, uh, he provides us with this imagery. He provides us with parables, stories, things like that. Um, and so you'll notice that the Quran doesn't really speak very much in the language of philosophy. It speaks in stories and parables and so on and images. So we have this image that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this preserved tablet, which is the decree of everything, right? And then the decrees from that proceed, and then the angels write it down as it's decreed for us. Mm -hmm. So um, now, so we have all of these texts that express the free will of human beings. And then we have another set of texts that express how these decrees change, right? And how, how we have the, the uh, we, we, we can petition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change our decrees. So uh, the, the, and this is mentioned in the, in the Quran, um, chapter 13, verse 39, um, Allah says that he erases or confirms whatever he wills of the book. Um, and with him is umul kitab, which is another word for the preserved tablet, which is the foundation of the book or the foundation of the decrees. So Allah erases decrees and he confirms decrees, right, according to his will. And so you'll see there are many uh, hadith that I mentioned in the paper. Like, for example, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said uh, that whoever wants to increase his provision and to extend his lifespan, let him uphold his family ties. Mm. So a person who ups, upholds his family ties, he uses their free will to uphold their family ties. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward that person by decreeing for them more provision and by uh, <laughs> decreeing for them more lives to live. 